Greetings. This is going to be part nine of the fire series. Turn your King James Bible to Isaiah chapter 10. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And uh, bulk, I'll leave off the last part. Uh, thank you. You were right. That was part eight, uh, if you're listening. I see you deleted a comment. All right, let's go. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe, woe, W-O-E, which means they're going to be full of woe. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. What's a decree? It's like a law. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Just like what a doctor does. A doctor prescribes medicine, right? Well, these people are prescribing their death. Verse 2, to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, P-R-E-Y, and that they may rob the fatherless. And what will ye do in the day of visitation? In other words, what are you going to do when Christ returns in all his glory to bring judgment upon the wicked and the ungodly? What are you going to do? Huh. Well, I, I know the answer to that. And what will ye do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from afar? To whom will ye flee for help? And where will ye leave your glory? Well, you know what they're going to do? Let's read a couple of chapters. Hosea, chapter 10, starting in verse 6. It shall be also carried into Assyria. Now remember, Assyria carried the northern Israel into captivity as judgment from God. It shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to King Jerob. Ephraim, uh, one of the tribes, that was the main tribe of northern Israel. Ephraim was one of the twelve tribes. Ephraim shall receive shame. And Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. Now, Samaria was the capital of Israel, northern Israel. Verse 8. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come upon shall come up on their altars and they shall say to the mountains cover us and to the hills fall on us O Israel thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah now what's this about thorns and thistles well the thing about the King James Bible is usually if you read the first place where a particular word or phrase appears and read the context, it'll explain the theme. So let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and oh, I guess we'll start at verse 13. Genesis 3 and verse 13. This is the fall of Adam and Eve. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, 
Thou art cursed, cursed, above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, enmity is extreme hatred, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now here's the punchline. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You see, one of the curses was, the ground's going to be cursed, and you're going to, you know, thorns and thistles. Thistles are, what good are thistles? You can't really eat them. And, and thorns, uh, guys, anybody ever get their hands stuck by a thorn, ladies? You know, they're no, thorns are no fun. All right, so uh, let's go to Luke chapter 30. Yeah, let's take a look at Luke chapter 30. 30. All right. Uh, here we go. Luke, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Oh, let's see. Let's go to verse for uh, Luke 23 and verse 13. I had to find a place to start. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, you know, we're talking about, we're not talking about Catholic priests here. Roman Catholic Church didn't exist. We're talking about the priests of the temple. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. Ah, don't we always hear the, oh, Rome, Rome was responsible for, for killing Jesus. Uh-uh, no. Nope, not if you believe the Bible. Now, if you want to believe the uh, fables of the so-called chosen ones, well, you can do that. But uh, my Bible says, no, nope. Pilate wanted to release him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they, who's they? The chief priests. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition, sedition's one of those fancy uh, $20 words that means treason, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. 
Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, they cried, not Pilate, they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid, laid hold of one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Um, when you're talking about paps, you're talking about a woman's breast giving milk. Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. You know, it's a horrible thing for a parent to watch their child to be buried. And that's what Jesus is warning about here. That, you know, their people are going to say, blessed are those that never had any children to watch them die. Verse 30, here's the punchline. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. Ah. How about Revelation 16? And then we're going to go back to Isaiah chapter uh, 10. Oh, uh, let's see. All right, let's turn to Revelation chapter 6. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb, who's the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world? Jesus. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts, four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, a penny back in these days is not like a penny we have today. A penny back then was considered a day's wage for an unskilled laborer. So a penny, you know, that's a day's wage. Now, I'm old enough to remember when a penny would buy three Tootsie Rolls. I remember nickel candy bars, if you can believe that. So, a measure of wheat. I mean, you're talking basically a loaf of bread for a day's wage. 
or three measures of barley for a penny. Uh, most people don't like eating barley bread. So can you imagine that? A loaf of bread costing a day's wage. Does that mean that the price of wheat goes up because it's scarce? Uh, seems like there would be, you know, this is talking about like famine. Can you imagine having to work an entire day to buy just a loaf of bread? I mean, really, think about it. And three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his, his name that set on him was Death. And hell followed with him. Well, that's how it works. When you die, the wicked, they go to hell. <laughs> that's, you know, that's how it works. The wicked, anyways. Um, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So, the sword means war. So here it is, it says a fourth part of the earth. You're talking a quarter of the earth dying. To kill with the sword, war, and with hunger, famine, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Now, there, back a hundred years ago, people understood what the word Adam meant. Look up in Strong's Concordance, look up Hebrew word number 119, 120, and 121. I think 118, 119, 120, and 121. Adam was a racial description. And they used to teach that the beasts of the field were non-Adamites, if you catch my drift. Uh, so, and, de and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So the beasts of the earth, are we talking about two-legged or four-legged beasts of the earth? I don't know. Take a look. Prophecy will be fulfilled. Trust me. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now these are those in Christ. They were under God's altar. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried, with a loud voice. Who cried? The souls under the altar that were slain for the word of God. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Well, guess what? These people are crying out to God for vengeance. Are you going to avenge us, O Lord? Um, so, you know, people that tell you that soul sleep, you know, when you die, you're just in the grave until you're resurrected. Uh, I don't think this supports that. I, as a matter of fact, I know it doesn't. But uh, people that preach and teach soul sleep will never read this to you because it contradicts what they teach. Verse 11. And avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. And white robes, white robes, were given unto them, every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Now, if you want to read in Joel, the book of Joel says, um, 
the moon becoming like blood and the sun becomes black. Uh, well, we could take a look at that real quick. All right. Um, Joel chapter 2. Oh, verse 10, Joel 2, 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Uh, we're not talking about morning, evening, night. No, we're talking about mourning. Like mourning a, a loved one who dies, right? Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. And give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? And today, people, we got the heathen ruling over us. Verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. All right, let's go back. To Revelation 6 and verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 3, Isaiah 10, 3. And what will ye do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help, and where will ye leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. See, people, if you'll repent and turn from your evil ways, God's hand is stretched out still. But when he's on his way, when, when he comes back, it's over. You know, when God, uh, when God told Noah to build an ar the ark and his family was on the ark, 
You know who closed the door? God himself closed the door of the ark. Closed the door of the ark, and the rain came. And those that were outside drowned. There's, there's a time when God's hand is not going to be stretched out. Verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath. He's talking about Israel here. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither does his heart think so, but it, it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 3. It's got some interesting stuff. Verse 1. Now, think God as the, bra uh, the bridegroom, the groom, and Israel as his bride. Think. Think about like that. Verse 1. Jeremiah 3, 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, you know, talk about divorce here, and she go from him and become another man's Shall he return, return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways of Hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden. Uh, we're talking about, you know, ring, uh, uh, April showers bring May flowers. We're talking about rain here. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hadst a, fo a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, now, Josiah was a good king. I hope to meet him one day. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Now, Josiah was king of Judah. I think he was the last good king of Judah. I'm not sure. Um, but Israel and Judah were divided. Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And, you know, going up on the high mountains and under the green trees uh, has reference to Satanism. Spiritual harlots, a spiritual whore. Verse 7. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. God gave Israel a divorce. God divorced her. Yet her treacherous sister Judah Feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 10. Now you know why God sent the Assyrians. 
Let's go to Isaiah 10, verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against an hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither does his, his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kalno as Karchishim? Is not Hamoth as Arphad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand doth as my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria. So there's, you know, graven images, idols, not only in Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, but also in Samaria, the capital of Israel. Verse 11, Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore, it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Sion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? You know, people... When a man's cutting down a tree, is the axe going to boast that he was the one that cut down the tree? No. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood. Therefore, shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness. Well, we're talking about famine here. And under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Oh, there's that fire again. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. Thorns and briars, right? And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. Soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but they shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. And that's what God's going to have. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob. Now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, 
O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation, what's indignation? Extreme hatred. And the indignation shall cease and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So it's going to happen. God's going to spank his people. And then after that, the yoke, the burden, the indignation is going to be taken away. Verse 28. He has come to Aiath. He has passed to Migron at Mishmash. He hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Ramah is afraid. Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galam. Cause it to be heard unto Laish, O poor Anathroth. Mad Menah is removed. The inhabitants of Gibbam gather themselves to flee. And as yet shall he remain at Nob that day. He shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror. Terror! And the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. All right. Boy, there's a, a lot of destruction and anger going on. And you know what? If you people think uh, that America is any different or the European Union is any different than these days, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, there's no difference. Uh, do people honor the God of the Scriptures? No. They most certainly don't. And like, and like uh, Jeremiah said, turn your hearts to the Lord with weeping and fasting and prayer. That's, that's it, people. When's the last time somebody mentioned repentance and weeping and fasting and prayer? sackcloth and ashes. You don't even hear that kind of preaching anymore. You don't. Nope, you hear uh, on TBN, send your, send your love uh, blessing to the Lord. Uh, here's our address. Oh, wait a minute. You want us to send our tithes and love blessings to the Lord, but you're giving us your address? Uh, I don't think so. So, all right, well, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. All, all glory to Jesus. Amen. <laughs>